Now, in this video, we'll talk about generics. So let's try to understand what is what exactly generic generic means. So basically, when you talk about Java, one of the best thing about Java is type safety, right? Which simply means that whenever you want to work with any variable, it should be first declared. Example, let's say if you want to work with a variable called as uh, a value. Now, we should be knowing the type of the value first before using it. Let's say if I specify the value as 5, but before even that, we have to mention the type of it. So we normally say int value. So uh, so this the type of this value is int, right? So we are achieving type safety here. So the type of the value is known at compile time itself. You're not waiting for the runtime to get the value of the file and then you will assign the type of it. Again, there are certain languages which supports that. Uh, but Java says no, it is type safe language, right? So you whenever you want to use any variable, first you have to make sure that you have the uh, so you have the type of the value, of, I mean type of the element. Now, uh, so if you talk about this variable, it is compulsory to define the type, right? But when it comes to collection API, again, we have seen one of the video of that. Uh, so when you talk about collection collection framework, so let's say when you're working with list, and when you say list of elements, so let me just remove that. It's a list of values this time, and you add a list. Now this list will have can have any type of value. Example, if I say values dot add, so you can see it is asking you for the object. So that means whenever you create a list, it is list of objects, right? Again, object is a base class for all the uh, classes available in Java. Example, when you work with integer, double, float, so these are classes, right? And the double, the object class is a superclass of all these classes. So when you say you can you can have a list where you can save where you can save uh, seven, and you can have a list where you can store even a name, right? So a string and a number both are supported in the same list. So that that means we are not achieving type safety here, and we do want to achieve type safety. Then how can we do that? How can we achieve type safety? Is is with the help of generics. So you can specify integer, and here also you can specify integer. So this is the syntax we have to use to specify the type of the element and you can see now string doesn't work since we wanted to achieve type safety so at the compile time itself you are you are getting that you are working with you're working with integers <clears throat> because what happens is if you don't use generics here if you don't mention generics and you have added all these elements your intention is not to add string your, your intention is just to add numbers but let's say by mistake you have added a string and later on, what you're doing is you're creating an int object and you're saying int i equal to value values dot get from the index 1, which is, the, which is this value. It will work for this one, first one. And then you just have to convert that. You have to say integer because by default, it is everything is string. I will say integer percent. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, first you have to convert that into string. Yeah, so because the type is object, right? So you have to convert that into string and then you are passing it. Now, if you try to print the value of i, everything will be, it will it will give you error now. It because you are expecting, so it, it says number format exception. So you are expecting a, a integer, but you are getting a string. So you are getting the error at runtime, right? So that's, that's not a good thing. When you say you have, so expecting value should be numbers and somewhere, by mistake, you're entering a string and it, it is making all those mistakes for all those problems for you. So to solve this problem, they have introduced the concept of generics, right? So we can we can put integer here, which will make sure that it will give you errors at compile time itself. Because handling the errors at compile time is way better than handling the errors at com at runtime. Right? So let's say let's try to understand how exactly this concept of generics came. I mean how they implemented the backend. So if I just go to a list and if I say list integer values and if I jump to the list implementation, okay, let, let me just jump to list implementation now. Okay, so you can see list is an interface which is having a angular bracket there and E. So this E means element. Okay, so this is how you define a generic. So you have to define the class name or the interface name with a generic type there so you have to specify angular brackets any symbol will do maybe you can i mean you can it supports any of the character starts from a to z let's try to let's try to do that let's let's try to implement our own generic so what i will do here is 
I will create my own class. I will name this class as container. Okay, provided it's not there in, in yeah. So we, we are creating a class called as container. And so how do you specify the type of this container? Yeah, before that, what we can do is, yeah. So how to specify the type of the container? So we can say angular bracket. And you can use any character, even A will do. Okay, what about small a? Yeah, it works, but convention says you have to use all the capital letters, so you will use capital A. Uh, but the thing is, when you say E, it represents something, it's a type of element, right? E is element. So normally we use this letter T for defining type. So you are working with, so this container will be working with this type. Now this T can be replaced by integer, it can be replaced by a float value, any class, any class, even, even student class can replace this T. So you can use anything, you can also use I, you can use O, but T represents type, right? So it is more readable compared to other, other letters. Uh, so we have defined t. So what we can do here is let's say I want uh, I want to create a variable called as value here Okay, now this value can be anything it can be integer it can be float it can be string But at a time so when I create the object of container I will specify see I want to work with integers So this value type should be integer Because if you if you are working with integer if you specify integer here for sure it will be integer throughout in future, if you want to create a container for float, this will not be supported because you are mentioning integer here. So what we can do is we can make it object. But that's again not a type safe language, right? Because type safe, you have to mention the type exactly. So what we'll do is use t there. So when you say t now, t value, it means you are, so whenever you create object of container, if you specify integer, this value becomes integer. Something like this. So when I say container, uh, obj equal to new container first of all it will give me some warning if I don't specify the generic there you can see uh, it says container is a raw type so that means when you, whenever you don't specify the type it becomes a raw type okay in fact if you give, even if you specify the angular bracket with question mark uh, does that work yeah so does it, it still work so we can use a uh, question mark here itself even this is uh, no we have to specify the actual thing there so even you can use question, question mark, even that is a raw type now. Uh, okay, that's a raw type. But what you can do is you can specify the integer here. So once you once you specify integer, now this t becomes integer and this value even becomes integer. Okay, uh, just to show you the proof, what I will do is I will say public void show. Okay, and I will say value, I, mean, I, will, I, will, I will print the type of value there. I will say value dot uh, get class dot get name <clears throat> So if you specify integer here that integer goes here in this t that t replaced I mean this tip did this t replaced by integer so the val integer value will be I mean the type of value would be integer So when I'm printing something here that will be of type integer now uh, Where's the output? Oh, we have to call show right so obj dot show Okay, and if you run this code, you can see we are getting null point exception. That's weird because we are not specified any value there. Uh, okay, let me just say this is zero. Uh, that's not possible. Uh, what we can do is we can say obj dot value equal to any value will do. Yeah, and it should work now. So you can see the type of value it is integer. Okay, so that's how you can specify the you can specify the value. That's how you can specify the type of the element. Okay. Now the type of element is not defined by this nine. Okay, it is defined by this integer. Example: If I replace this by double. Okay, and okay, we have to specify that value there. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, I mean. You have to trust me now. <laughs> it works that way. It works that way. So you have to specify. So this type is defined by that double thing there. Okay, uh, let me replace this now. So what else we can do now? Okay, so yeah. So let's say for this for this element, you need some getter setter. So what we can do is we can right click here, and we can specify uh, sources. And when you say getter setter, so the type of getter setter when you when you work with it, that even would be t. So you can see this get value returns t, and the set value will be accepting t. So when you say you're working up you're working with a container of double so this t would be double and this t would be double there's one thing you have to remember wrap so whenever you work with generics it only supports wrapper classes i mean it, it only supports classes not wrapper classes but classes you cannot use int you cannot use float as a data type example you cannot say 
you cannot say int here okay this composite to work with integer i mean a class okay so whenever you work with generics it is composite to work with class even you can create a student class okay so container student provided you have a student class so this t would be replaced by student okay so that's how it works in fact in generics we have some more stuff to understand first of all uh, example let's say I, ha I want to use t but this t should be of type I mean it should be only of type number example if I say number if I say t here so this t should so I can see I can I can write student here also right but I don't want the container to hold student it should only hold number now what is number uh, if you talk about any class like integer, so integer class, double class, they all extend one class called double class, example, or uh, number class. So we have this class integer which extends number class. Even double class extends number class. So all these classes, they extend a number class, right? So what I want is this, this collection here, this T should support only numbers. So integer should work, double should work, but not student. So what we can do is we can say this t will extend number. So only that class can replace this t which extends number. So example, if I say double, even that works, you can see there's no error. In fact, number will work itself, number itself will work. But if you try to use student here, you can see you're getting an error because that that bounded type is of type number or the subclass of number it will not support student what what about object even it will not support that uh, it will support integer it will support double it will support float because even float extends number okay so if, let me show you demonstration if, if you go to float float even extends number right so that's how you that's how you use this so we have t extends number let's say i have uh, just to give you demonstration, let's say I have a method which is demo, which accepts an array list. Okay, and this array list accepts only num only on only integers, right? So we can use uh, okay, we can say obj, right? And to import the package. So now if I want to call demo there, so if I say obj dot demo, of course we have to pass an array list only of numbers, or, or sorry, only of integers, right? I cannot pass anything else. I just have to pass with integers but let's say if I if I want to support even numbers so we cannot do that right because it accepts only integers so what we can do is we can say question mark extends number so we have a different syntax here so here we use here we use t here we use question mark because we can replace this t I mean numbers with t because this t will become a t here and that class will extend so if I creating a if I'm creating a number and then if I'm passing a integer even that will work again the different syntax for methods so for methods example if I if I'm creating a number so t becomes number but the elements I want to pass is of integer so we have to use question mark extends t that's one of the syntax you have to remember in fact we also have super now what is super is Let's say if I'm creating a container of integers, so this t here is an integer, right? In that case, if I'm passing an integer that will work, so this super will support all the super classes. Example, if I pass number, even that will work. So super means if you're passing a number, so number is a super class of integer, it will work. But if I use any class which, which, which extends integer, that will not work. So the subclass of integer will not work here. In fact, we don't have a subclass for integer, but let's say in case if we have a subclass for integer, that will not work. So super means, so this question mark can be a super class of T. When you say extends, that would be, so this would be the subclass of T. So you have to remember that. So that's it. That's about, that's how you use generics in Java. So that's it. Thank you.